Okay, when we're talking about circles, there's a couple things you guys want to know. So first off, there's 360 degrees in a circle, just like a square. The second thing is whenever you're dealing with circles, you're pretty much going to have to deal with the circle's radius or diameter. So the radius is the length from the center of the circle to any point on the outside of the circle. And then diameter is just twice that because it is the distance from any point on the circle through the center to the point opposite that. So radius is half of diameter. Okay, knowing what the radius and diameter are, you can find the circumference or the area of the circle, depending on what you are supposed to, what you're supposed to find. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And remember, if you have the diameter, then that's fine because you can just say diameter divided by two is equal to radius, or diameter is equal to two times the radius. And circumference, which is the same as perimeter, it's just the distance if I were to walk around the circle that I would have to go, is pi d or 2 pi r. They're the exact same thing because d and 2 r are the same. It just depends on what they give you. So if they give you diameter, just multiply by pi. If they give you radius, multiply by 2 and pi at the same time. And just a note on pi, don't put pi into your calculator. Keep it as is unless they tell you to use like 3.14 for pi. So just keep it because it'll always cross out or be in the answer choices unless they tell you otherwise. Okay, so those are our two big formulas that we're going to use over and over and over again for circles. And a lot of times you're going to use one of the formulas to find the other. So for instance, if uh, we were to have a problem that gives us a circle and says that, um, let's say it says the circumference is 2 pi. And then it asks, what is the area? So if we know the circumference is 2 pi and we want the area, we need to find the radius. So I would say circumference is equal to 2 pi r, which is equal to 2 pi. And then notice 2 pi r and 2 pi r has to equal 1. And so then the area equals pi r squared. So that would equal pi 1 squared. So that would just equal pi. So we successfully moved from getting the circumference to finding the area. OK, let's go ahead and use those formulas to do a problem that's a little bit more complicated. So I went ahead and I drew a series of circles, kind of like a dartboard. And then I also wrote down that geometric probability is your desired area over your total area which is the same exact thing as, as normal probability. We're just going to deal with areas. So let's say that we have uh, this picture, and it tells us that a person is going to throw darts at a dartboard. So assuming we have to make this assumption that there is a you know equal chance of the person throwing the dart anywhere on the board, aka they're not aiming for anything specifically, um, or if they are, they're absolutely terrible and therefore their aim doesn't matter. Um, assuming all of that, we are going to try to figure out what is the probability of a dart hitting on the blue shaded circle. So they would have to tell us some information about the sizes of these circles. So let's say that the radius of circle 1, which is the center one, is 2. Uh, the radius of circle 2 is five and the radius of circle three, the circle is two and this one is three, is ten. So we're trying to find what the probability of finding the shaded circle is. So what we would do with a problem like this is because we don't have automatically the area of a donut shape, what we want to do is we want to figure out all three circles separately and then combine them in a way that makes sense. So let's go ahead and just find the areas of all of the circles for a second. So area of circle 1 would have to be pi r squared, and in this case it's 2. So we would get that 4 pi is equal to the area of circle 1. 
Okay, area of circle 2 is pi 5 squared, so that will give us 25 pi as the total area there. And then the area of circle 3 would be pi 10 squared, which would give us 100 pi. Okay, so now the trick is we want our desired, aka the donut shape near circle 2, over total area. So the total area is just the area of circle 3 because circles 2 and 1 are both inside of circle 3. So if we're looking for our probability, we know that it's something, which we'll determine in a second, over 100 pi. So then in order to figure out what goes on top, we have to figure out how to find just the shaded. And the way you would do that is you just take the area of circle 2 and take away the teeny little area of circle 1 that's in the center of it. So we would say question mark is equal to area 2 minus area 1 which is equal to 25 pi minus 4 pi, which would then be equal to 21 pi. So your probability would equal 21 pi over 100 pi. And you could cross out your pi's if you wanted to and say that it's equal to 21 over 100. So 21 out of every 100 times, if you weren't aiming and there was an equal probability of hitting anywhere, you would hit within that range. Okay, next thing to know about circles are tangent lines. So a tangent line is a line that touches a circle at one point and is perpendicular to the radius. So here's a circle and this is a line tangent to it. Okay, because part of the definition of a tangent line is that it's perpendicular to the radius, anytime you see a tangent line in any of these problems, you're pretty much going to draw a right triangle. So for instance, if I have a tangent line here, I'd probably make my life easier and go ahead and draw a radius in. Now it obviously depends where you're going to draw that right triangle by what information they give you. So uh, let's go ahead and let's actually try a problem. Okay, so let's say that they give you a problem that looks like the bottom left. So we've got um, a line which is tangent to circle O at point A. And they want to know what is the length of AC. So we're trying to find what AC is equal to. Okay, in order to find what AC is equal to, and knowing that we have a tangent line, we should probably draw in a right triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in the right triangle like that because that utilizes a side AC and also a radius. So let's say that they gave us that AB is equal to 10. So segment AB is equal to 10. If you notice AB is also the uh, diameter of the circle so the radius is equal to 5. So in order to solve for something like this, because we don't know what the angle, the central angle is here, they would have to tell us what CO is equal to. So let's say that they tell us that CO is equal to AB, which is equal to 10. So our radius is 5, so we can draw that in. And then we know that our hypotenuse is 10. Now, the trick here is uh, you actually could use Pythagorean Theorem if you wanted to, um, but the other thing you could do is realize, okay, 5 could be x, 10 is 2x, and therefore the side uh, CA would have to be x root 3, because this would be a 30, 60, 90. So we would say, all right, we realize that it is a 30, 60, 90, and the ratios are x, uh, x root 3. 3 and 2x, and so here with x being equal to 5 and 2x being equal to 10, x root 3 is equal to 5 root 3, and that would be our answer. Okay, next up, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at some part-to-part -part ratios, and then we'll actually get to move on to some complex figures. Okay, the first part-to-part uh, -part ratio that we need to know is when you're trying to find the arc length, or that would be kind of your curved, I'm putting it in green, the curved length um, 
when you're looking at a sector piece. Um, you're going to have to figure out what the entire circumference of the circle is and then also the central angle. So the idea to this formula is that if you know the ratio between the central angle and the number of degrees in the entire circle, that should also match the ratio from the arc length to the entire circumference of the circle. And the next one, very similar idea. You're doing pretty much the same thing. Um, in this one, we're looking at areas. So you're always going to have the same x over 360 degrees. Go ahead and put those degree spots in there. Um, but this time, since you're looking for the area of a sector, that's going to go on top. So area of sector. And because all we're doing is having a part to whole and part to whole ratio, we're going to go ahead and put area of circle on the bottom. So, and this would give you the area of this piece. So all of the kind of shaded in burgundy slash fuchsia color would be what you're looking for. So in order to use either of these ratios, they're going to have to give you two things. They're going to have to give you what your central angle is, so you can tell, you know, how many slices essentially of cake or pizza or pie um, there are. And also they're going to have to give you some way of figuring out what the circumference or the area is. So a lot of times they're going to give you the radius. Or if they're really sneaky, they'll give you the area of a sector, and they will ask you what the arc length is. So you'd have to do the problem basically twice in order to, to figure that out. But basically you're just filling in and then cross-multiplying to find whatever it is that you are looking for in the particular problem. So let's go ahead and uh, let's take a look at one of those. Okay, so this is a particular sneaky problem, uh, like the one I just alluded to. So they tell you that arc AB is 2 pi, so arc length AB is 2 pi. What is the area of the sector? All right, so they're sneaky because they're going to make you use both formulas. But this is a great problem to practice on because it gives you a little bit of ease with both types of formulas and therefore, you know, will help you on test day. So let's start at the very top. So, we know we're going to use the part-to-part -part ratios, so the first thing we would want to do is take our uh, 40 degrees and put it over 360. So we've got part over whole equals, and we should have another part and another whole. So it says uh, the arc length of AB is 2 pi, so that's only part of the circle, so we put it on top, and then we're looking for the bottom. So the bottom will give us the circumference of the circle. So uh, we would go ahead and we'd cross multiply. So we would have 40x is equal to 720 pi. And then you'd go ahead and divide both sides by 40. And this, by the way, is an appropriate time to use your calculators. Um, so once you divide 720 by 40, you get that x which remember is the circumference of the circle, is going to come out to 18 pi. So now we have 18 pi is the circumference of the entire circle. So now we can use that information to figure out what the area of the sector is. So in order to find area of sector, you need to know area of whole circle. And in order to know the area of a circle, you have to find the radius. So you'd say, okay, circumference is equal to 18 pi, which is also equal to 2 pi r, so r has to be equal to 9. So now that we know that the radius is 9, we can find the area is pi r squared, which is pi 9 squared, which gives us 81 pi. So we know our area is 81 pi. Okay, so on to step two. And therefore, I'm going to go ahead and use a different color. All right, so in step two, we're going to set up pretty much the same idea. We're going to have 40 degrees over 360 degrees is equal to, this time, we want area of sector. So I'll go ahead and say area of sector here. So that's what we're looking for over total area. So our total area we figured out was 81 pi. All right, so cross multiply again. So 
so you've got uh, 360 times A of sector is going to be equal to, let's see, 40 times 81, so 3,240 pi. And then you go ahead and you divide out your 360 on both sides. And then down here, you've got your area of your sector is equal to 9 pi. So that would be your answer. Okay, guys, that's a particularly difficult problem because it makes you go through both of those formulas that I just taught you. Um, so in terms of difficulty, this is, this is a lot harder than most of the problems that you'll see, but this actually is, you know, a real test-like problem. So uh, you could see something like this, or you could see just what's in green or just what's in kind of burgundy. Okay, very nice job, guys. Uh, so we've covered circles. Let's go ahead and look at complex figures.